Researchers here at Sanford Burnham Medical Research Institute and elsewhere are working in a field known as regenerative medicine, pursuing the idea that diseased or damaged tissues and organs could be replaced using stem cells. I'm here with Dr. Mark Mercola, professor and program director at Sanford Burnham, and two members of his lab, Dr. Eric Willems and Dr. Paul Bushway. This team has been looking for ways to generate heart cells, known as cardiomyocytes, from stem cells in order to better study heart cell function and cardiovascular diseases in the lab, as well as explore the potential these cells ho hold for alleviating human disease. Dr. Mercola, why do we need heart cells? What could researchers do with them? Heart injury, which is a major cause of death in the advanced world, um, is at its root a cause a loss of mu heart muscle cells. And so what we would like to do ultimately is be able to make new muscle cells to regenerate the heart. Ideally, I'd like to see that done by boosting the heart's own limited ability to regenerate itself. So why stem cells, though? What makes them so special as a starting point? So stem cells are unique in that they can re self renew, that is, they can make more of themselves, but they can also give rise to other cell types. They can give rise, for example, the stem cells in the heart to cardiomyocytes, the muscle cells. They can give rise to vascular cells in the heart, maybe even other cell types. What we would like to do is to direct the stem cells to become the useful cell types for regenerating, rebuilding the heart muscle. Dr. Willems, what are the challenges in making heart cells from stem cells? It's actually very challenging because we don't know how exactly we can control the stem cells to turn into cardiomyocytes. So we're trying to understand what signals or how we can turn these stem cells into cardiomyocytes and especially in the adult heart that's a big problem. This team recently made a breakthrough in this area discovering a specific molecule that converts stem cells into heart cells. Dr. Bushway, tell us how you found this heart producing, heart cell producing molecule known as ITD1. Well, Heather, we initially um, refined a murine embryonic stem cell uh, differentiation assay to such that it could be run in a 3D four well microtiter plate format for screening to reduce the cost, labor, and error associated with testing many thousands of small molecules. Ultimately, we screened about 30,000 or so uh, molecules and found a handful of those that elicited a cardiomyogenic effect. ITD1 was among those molecules. And so you were searching through a large number of molecules to find those that might produce heart cells. But how did you know when you had heart cells? Uh, at the day 10 endpoint of this uh, phenotypic screen, a fluorescent protein expression associated with uh, cardio, specifically cardiomyocyte activated genes is evaluated via image analysis routines and quantification uh, analysis that we developed here in the lab. Um, and this gauge is the biological effect that we observe of them across the many thousands of molecules that we've tested. Dr. Willems, what is ITD1 exactly, and how does it tell stem cells what to do? So ITD1 is, to our knowledge, the first selective TGF-beta inhibitor, and what it does is it blocks the signal of TGF-beta by degrading the type 2 receptor. And that's how we can convert stem cells into cardiomyocytes. And now that you have ITD1, what's next? What are the future potential applications for this molecule? Well, I see two things on the horizon. The first is to develop this molecule as a reagent so that you could produce in vitro, for experimentation, lots of heart muscle cells. The other application, which I think is more exciting, is to develop this molecule into a drug. The first step in that process would be to develop it into a tool compound that we would use to treat animals that have experimentally induced heart attacks and to ask whether the molecule itself will regenerate the heart muscle cells that are lost after a heart attack. Well, thank you all for being here today and, and answering my questions. This study, including the discovery of heart cell producing molecule ITD1, appears in the August 3rd, 2012 issue of the journal Cell Stem Cell. To read more about this and other studies, visit our blog at beaker.sanfordburnham.org.